Claudette Colvin was a 15-year-old girl who was arrested for refusing to give up her seat to a white woman said she could not move because history had her glued to her seat. And this was nine months prior to Rosa Parks, who sparked the nation with the same notion and Claudette would not get recognized because she was too dark, too nappy-headed and swollen belly was told she was not appealing enough in poetry. Poetry's a lot like Claudette. Knows what it's like to lay the groundwork and still be parked at the back of everyone's mind. Knows ignorance like a husband. Knows what it's like to fill a space and still feel the echo in the room. Knows empty pockets. Run as deep as the wells we make your tears waterfall into and we are just as salty. We who empty ourselves to fill your cups. People who pay women to shake their bare bodies and in, and in the same breath ask me bear my soul for free like both actions aren't equally as vulnerable. The same people who can't digest the truth they ask us to spit It state's attorney Marilyn Mosby who Ursula grips Dustin's voice when they demand she free Keith Davis. It's me traveling two hours to get paid no dollars to publicly heal for you. It's the city paying rappers and DJs thousands of dollars and asking me to perform for experience Exposure, like exposure keeps the lights on. It's those same artists who take an intermission once we've stepped on stage laced in their chuckles when we tell them that poetry is in fact a career path. How can I ask y'all to give poets their flowers when we're the seed that made you bloom in the first place? Singing, poetry with a melody, dancing, poetry in motion, photography, poetry under a still light and poets stuck under a still plight and I am still fighting between a rock in a hard place between feet of my soul and feet of my pockets and the only thing that's getting fed is y'all egos like poetry didn't walk so y'all could fly on private jets how are we supposed to get to new heights when history has us glued to our seats because Liv said poetry is a black woman knows ignorance like a husband knows what it's like to fill a space and still feel the echo in the room knows empty pockets run as deep is the wells we make your tears waterfall into, and we are just as salty. We who empty ourselves to make you feel good. I've been to places pretty, pretty places like Beverly Hills, oh, where mimosas and liquid diamonds crash on the shoreline. These beach dwellers collect inner city properties like seashells and trade real estate like spades cards. These places pretty enough for screen time on your television. Pretty much the poster child of Los Angeles and the epitome of daddy's money. Yeah, I've been to places pretty like, like, like Hollywood and its walk of fame. If Dorothy's ruby slippers were red bottoms, she'd be trotting this white gold road, feeling oh so ostentatious, feeling higher than their class, higher than their all glass, renovated high rise buildings, higher than their credit scores and their high rise Lululemon leggings, where most are foreign to the concept of begging. Oh, but I bet you've never been to the lowlands of Los Angeles. You know, the dark basement that the brochures don't show, where no one knows a Dorothy. But Dominique in her uncreased low-rise dunks is always found walking where drugged corners intersect with broke lanes, where Obine, the Nigerian art collector, sells an Afro Mona Lisa on the curb for $50, starving entrepreneurship. Reparations in our own hands. The corner man whistles tunes only sufferers know. Place ear to pavement here. Queen Khalifa's war cries. The clatter of tumbleweeded dye rolled about two blocks down. Soft-spoken escape routes never received. The color of marigold by girl eating mangonadas for her forever time. The subtle rumble of white Porsches approaching from the hillside. Huh. Gentry is coming. A cavalry of credit-drawn carriages coming to make the place pretty. 
I had hoped it had been the sound of Jesus finally, so the painting of Black Messiah in Obine's art shop made more sense, made more than sense finally, because this living is protest. This is the heart of LA that beats and weeps all the same, but investors bleach its arteries with beige colors and caramel fraps. See street markets where black women sell incense and head wraps and market the perfect location to reinvent hot yoga or to build a bank that will deny those same black women loans. Oh, this is what you call pretty. Pretty shines like heirloom pearls, not pretty like glimmer of grills in teeth. No, pretty like veneers and messy buns. Not pretty like barrettes on little black girls or street tacos or graffiti done by people far too talented for their circumstance or a broken glass or the unironic musicality of barber shops. Not like that sweet little old lady with only six teeth but still smiled at me anyway like I was her own granddaughter. Nah, no, that ain't pretty. But I've been to places pretty, and I can assure you that those pretty places have got nothing on the heart of this city. Uh, greetings, everyone. How you doing? Uh, I, I am uh, lightweight offended by the lack of energetic reciprocity. Uh, we are here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, that's how it goes down. My name is Mark Bamuti Joseph. I'm the vice president of social impact here at the Kennedy Center. Uh, I am a poet and an extraordinary fan of the voices that you've already heard and that you will continue to hear. Um, this is um, uh, clearly an important program, not just in terms of the literary continuum, but really the continuum of um, the hopes of democracy in our country. Um, this is the National Cultural Center named for the 35th president um, of the United States who publicly inspired us all to have a collective aspiration. Um, as I look out behind you and I see the bust of uh, John F. Kennedy, I'm reminded that JFK had bars, that he um, was worthy of a monument like this, um, in part because he inspired us with language. How many people in our public discourse right now that you know, that are above the age of 21 um, that are doing the same thing? How many people do you know personally that uplift the public imagination with language, with possibility? The idea that has come together in the form of recognizing a national youth poet laureate, the idea that has come forth in cultivating the next language, the, the next generation of linguistic possibility is core to what Kennedy believed in and really the reason why I took the gig here. The, the whole idea of social impact is just that impact. Like the thing about change is that things don't stay the same. So how does change happen? How does um, literacy embed itself in the public imagination in a new and exciting way? Um, you've already heard a couple of examples of such. You will continue to hear more. So the next time that an embodied voice comes on the stage, please don't welcome them with tepid ass applause like you did for your boy. Um, because the way that language is going to live and the way, honestly, that the democracy is going to survive is if you give something back to it when it inspires you from the stage, okay? Um, right now, y'all are at like a C minus. Um, yeah, the next time a voice 
that inspires you comes on the stage, you will do what? Thank you, my brother. The next voice that is coming to the stage is my very good friend, Camille. Please give it up for the leader of this program. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I bring you greetings from the National Youth Poet Laureate Program. Our program was founded in 2008 to celebrate youth voice at the intersection of literary arts, civic engagement, and social impact. We now have 100 programs across the United States that lead Youth Poet Laureate programs, and we are here in our nation's capital at the Kennedy Center tonight to announce the very next National Youth Poet Laureate alongside several state Youth Poet Laureates, and we're so excited to have you all here with us as well as streaming. So make some noise. Coming up next for Montgomery County Youth Poet Laureate, Tada Parkash. Make some noise for the poet. Monsoon season. I bend down to kiss the grass and call it prayer. My lenga smudges with dirt, catches light that turns my sequ the sequins gold. Behind me, the swing set groans with age. I say, I love this place, out loud. How sprawled out here, I can feel the world's soily belly breathe alongside mine. The fat red-white woodpecker at the edge of the field beats bark into heartbeat, lined up with my own. I don't think I'm any different from this place. The cloud above me looks like the dome of a mushroom, a large curved puff of white. Maybe when I am old and lying on my bed beneath cardinal red covers and my chest feels filled with a sticky sap, and my voice croaks like a yellow-bellied bullfrog by the lakeside, I will wake up, and the Blue River veins in my hand will be pressed into smooth brown skin again, and I will be sprawled out here on the grass, inhaling honeysuckle, and wind will brush away my hair like a mother's hand. Maybe right now, if I ask for rain, the clouds will break open into monsoon, like the leathery leaves hugging the arm of the banyan tree, pinned to the edge of my childhood playground, where years ago I climbed high enough to let the sun hit my throat, where I held the branch and leaned forward, my sweaty palms pressed against the coarse skin, the bark-covered body holding me like a promise, where I swung to the ground, dropped to soft soil, and ran, my small body tumbling into tall grass, where I stopped, waited, to let my footsteps catch up to me, my shadow stretched by afternoon sun, my breath stumbling into breeze. Wind breaks the cloud above me into wispy strands of white. The sky spins and the crescent moon moves with it. Supple bodies always crack with age. River erodes rock. This is how the world is. I close my eyes and wait for the sky to come to a gentle stop. Tears wash down my sandstone cheeks, but everything around me is dry. Thank you. Good work, good work. Keep clapping. The next poet is from Arlington, Virginia. Make some noise for Mia Demina. Dogwood. Snow scattered birthday parties and the thick heat of neighborhood gatherings. The flock of formidable lawn chairs is always intimidating, no matter how many years it's been. 
A flowering tree towers over me, like the cherry blossoms enshrouding mid-afternoon conversation, reaching out to empty space, singing of Virginia and of me. Walking home from school along the highway, I feel the buzz of tires scraping a homeland. Violet and pumpkin-colored sunsets behind traffic lights, eggshell blue porches, late afternoon dog walkers, and runners that rise with the sun, as if being first on the sidewalk means you are first in everything else as well. These are the branches that have grown as I have in the last 17 years. I'm sure if you cut down to the center and saw the rings of age in the trunk, they would match exactly to my fingerprint. These branches that have grown so wide and stretched so far over the porch during the in-between of summer and fall, high school football sounds oscillating within the darkness of a Friday night, surveying everything like the eye of a bird. Thank you. And up next, from Hampton Rose, Virginia, Duran Glass III. Imagine layers in a game where we all players No more stargazing or police car chasing Imagine life to bring us Lauren Hill type of singers Even the righteous schemers still let Christ redeem us Life is greener on this side The beauty that we see Be see, 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 be see This black man is not here to beat you down or take what's yours not here to undress you, enjoy you, and fade away. Not looking to pick pockets for petty pennies. This black man, he never waxed thug or picked up a drake because he's here for a long time, not a good time. To stack funds, not for the fast cars you think we all want. Not for the weed you think we all smoke. Not for the guns you think we all tote. Not for the studio to waste time spitting rhymes you think we all wrote. Nah. For them lessons to run up more bread than you could ever think of, allow me to rephrase. To enroll in college classes, to earn more capital than your mind could imagine. For my first home that I'll give to my children and for them to give to theirs for funds to hand down to my heirs, this black man will be fighting not with his fists, but with his mind. Fire will be fought with fire, and this black man with the soul of a dragon will spit flames from his tongue, set fire to parchment through ink and wordplay. This black man is building into what can only be described as the epitome of success. No multiple choice on this test, only one way to answer the question, are you going to make it? No other choice than to learn, build, and succeed. This black man, he's not here for the delicious pleasures of life, but for the fruits of labor. Perpetuating black excellence at its finest hands to the sky with our troubles behind us, a roadblock isn't in the way. Once you find a way around it, look, up, look upon our past and be astounded the many things that could have broken us, a testament to the indomitable black spirit. All my kinfolk say black power. All my kinfolk say black power. black power. A phrase to raise the chest and chins of the melanated diaspora. This black man, he got his own. Born after FUBU, but this black man, he writes for us so they don't pass by us. It's essential. Not in touch with the motherland, but this black man, he knows the womb he came from. This black man knows his roots. They just aren't reconnected yet. This black man is beautiful. Sunlight kisses chocolate skin turns it honey gold. I know you've seen it. This black man is smart. From reading rooms to reading books, this knowledge is a weapon. This black man, this black man. A seed growing every day, this black man, he took the hate, turned it to fertilizer, and sprouted from the dirt. You can't beat this black man down. Muscles, they grow back stronger when they tear. And this black man, he's been ripped to pieces. Brand this black man as a thief, you don't understand. He's coming to take everything that he deserves and apologies, they don't feel as good as them reparations. Yes. This black man, he's human. This ivory cover is only a decoration for the mind held beneath. Knowledge runs deeper than this black skin. 
How could you know that? All you see is a curly-haired trigger waiting to go off. For what? When the crimes of the Caucasian man are brought to light, you see one man, you see an individual effort, but black skin equals high minds, black skin equals a mass murder machine moving as one. How'd that work? These black men were not looking to beat you down. Our hearts, they pump the same blood and feel the same things yours do. We're not looking to take what's yours. Earning gives us the same feelings of accomplishment that you get. We're not looking to undress you, enjoy you, and fade away. A desire to be loved, it's shared among us all we have yet to receive. These black men, they're people. Why can we not be treated as such? Thank you. For the poets, for the poets, for the poets, right? All that and some. The first half of our show this evening, you heard from the DMV poets. The very first poet you heard perform was Anaya Taylor from the Baltimore Youth Poet Laureate Program. Yes, Baltimore is in the house. The second poet you heard from was our 2023 National Youth Poet Laureate, Salome Akbaroji. And we are just so excited to be here. Up next for the second half of the show, you will hear from our regional winners and national finalists. So to become the regional youth poet laureate of their part of the United States, they competed against other youth poet laureates across the country, and they were selected based on their written poetry portfolios and the civic engagement they do in their communities, and they have now advanced to this national stage. So up next, you will hear a group poem from the 2024 National Youth Poet Laureate finalists. Welcome them to the stage. <laughs> Before I had a name for love, the world was my mother until it wasn't. I want to love my country, but before I became a Pinai, I was a daughter. To be almost native to a country that does not love you back is to carry genocide on your tongue, a language forced onto you, a religion your people never practiced turned knees bending for the Bible written in a different dialect. How much does language break before it becomes my own? How long does language disappear before it becomes mine? How much do a people disappear before they are forgotten? La Jota we are in Macha. She is a Lakota woman, raised by the land and the mothers who lived before my mothers, who always had flour beneath their nail beds, hair tied back into tight braids. I owe my strength to these women, my bloodline. To, to be, be almost, almost native to an almost, almost country, country means. My name crossed the US border illegally in 2004 and is now considered an invasive species. The girls in South Florida love chisme, or any rumor that won't end with a deportation hearing. Go to parties knowing they're an ice raid waiting to happen. Go, waiting for someone to pull America's welcome mat from under our feet. Silence my people who are living to survive. Our once great nation, now just a memory left behind. The blackest thing about history is, it's almost forgotten. The most immigrant and American thing we do is live anyway. Roll our eyes at category fives and cry about 60 degree lows. The apocalypse has happened before. The, the apocalypse, apocalypse is happening again. again. The world keeps remaking itself. Finding life in deserted dreams. Because love keeps surviving. In, in poverty, poverty and, and in wealth. wealth. Till, Till hunger, hunger do, do us part. part. My mom adorns her fingers with beautiful rings. Struts into the function wearing a faux fur coat. Whoever said survival couldn't be glamorous hasn't, hasn't met, met us. us. Every Everything we needed, we found. Everything this country has, we built. We are holy text, all open-armed, all translated differently, all begging our nation to believe in us. Let me show you the beauty behind being.
being a native woman, how to have the loudest laugh in the room, to let your spirit soar in the sky next to eagles and not clip your own wings. My body, just my body, not a flag, not a campaign strategy. Everything I choose to carry is mine. Everything in me is a song. I say love is boundless and the world breaks open. Everything in me is proof. We're, We're still here. here licking talkie dust off our green card applications. Relearning powwow footwork in the backyard. Drinking, Drinking in the, the cool shadows, shadows of, of a day. day that hasn't killed us yet. It was a good poem, right? Yeah, it was a good poem, it was a good poem. They have been working on this poem for months via Zoom, right? So they arrived in DC this weekend and they pulled that together and knocked it out the park. So up next, we will give each of them an opportunity to share a solo poem with you all and I will share some of the remarks from the judges. So let's get into it. Up first, we have Aaliyah, American Horse. She represents the Midwestern United States. Esteemed scholar Dr. Gloria Latson Billings said of Aaliyah, her work reveals a visionary with the clear ability to reflect on the sins of the past and simultaneously push toward the hope of the future. Her poetry gives me chills. Clap for Aaliyah, American Horse. I'll sit in your lap and listen to your tales. As you put my dark hair into braids, Unchi, tell me the stories of your days. The wars and wounded knee, the lost generation, long nights on the reservation. Grandmother, tell me of your sisters and brothers as you touched my skin with calloused hands. Tell me what it's like to be a native woman to grow old and tell stories. Teach me how to sew our family's star quilts and braid my own children's hair. Unless my life is taken before I get there. There's a girl who tells me about her Cherokee lineage while pointing at my beaded earrings. She likes listening to electric powwow and wears a feather behind her ear. Describes herself as 1 16th, shares posts online about that res life. That girl who says she likes the aesthetic of Pocahontas' headband lives in a land of oblivion. She swims in stolen turquoise, buys sage from some big box company too plastic to ignite, buries us alive, but wipes the dirt from our eyes. I wonder if that girl found herself on the heavy end of her own shovel, would her eyes cry the same color tears engraved in my nation's face? I wonder if she understood that to be a native woman is to mourn. Would she still mourn from colonization to fetishization? It is not romantic to be indigenous. It is begging to go home with no ears to listen. It is watching the ghosts of girls whose voices whisper in the wind, whose tears flow in the creek, turning the water red. It is telling your family you love them but not out of spontaneous affection, rather an inevitable goodbye. It is no foul play involved. It is self-inflicted. It is his braids were chopped and he died the same way his sister did. Grandmother, what happens when you must sew the quilt I'm buried with? Don't cry when my skin becomes game and I'm hunted for these long, dark braids. Shed no tears, Unchi. When men find me easy to murder and easier to rape, the news channels won't bother to say my last name. Afraid of his horses, long soldier, bluebird, brings plenty. But in my name will justice lurk, justice for my sisters and brothers missing and murdered. My grandmother's calloused hands will only ever find solace again when she traces the edges of a tear-stained funeral program. I will be stuck in time 
My future will remain trapped inside a picture frame and with it goes an essence of life that isn't lived in a constant state of memory. Did you see the dress though? Did you see the dress? Yes, okay, Nebraska. Okay, okay. Up next, representing the Southern United States, Snake Shanasia Jaunty is, um, I'm starting over, sorry. Representing the Southern United States, Shanasia Jaunty, the acclaimed poet and poetry activist Bob Holman said of her work, Shanasia is a searing truth teller, not only to the world, but to herself. Make some noise for Shanasia Jaunty. Clap, 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 clap. Then America said, let there be light, and there was light. And America saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. America called the light white and the darkness black. Dear daughter, when the boy says he only likes white girls, know he's afraid of the dark. No men shoot what they fear, and bullets have always been black girl kryptonite. No shrinkage is a survival tactic. Our first lesson that making ourselves small still takes up too much space. No, your blackness is desirable at the slave auction, but not at the school dance. No, America's bedtime stories will never include you. No, they're written with the same words they prayed you would never learn to read. And slavery passed and slavery returned, marking the 21st century. Then America said, let there be a space between the races to separate the supremacy of the light from the lowliness of the dark. And that is what happened. America called the space Eurocentric beauty standards, and America saw that it was good. When the boy says he prefers mixed girls, no, he has never slept without a nightlight. When he puts light skin and dark skin in competition, no colorism is a rivalry neither of you knew you were having. You see, he hopes to be your puppet master. The strings he pulls are once noose, as you see. If the blacks hate each other enough, they won't notice when the system leaves them all hanging. America also made racial dating preferences. America set these preferences to guide the beauty standard, to govern the light and the dark, and to separate the whites from the blacks. And America saw that it was good. When the black boy says he doesn't like black girls, know he fears the monster under his bed looks just like the one on top of it. No, he's forgotten his skin is proof a black woman was loved once. He is a black sheep America refuses to count. And while some wake up on the wrong side of the bed, one day his ancestors woke up on the wrong side of the globe. No, his black is desirable at the slave auction, but not at the school dance. No, it's hard to love a boy who's six foot if he'll soon be six feet under. No, the moral of America's bedtime stories is self-hatred. Know that on the last page he dies for our country's sins and his citizens betray him like Judas. And daughter, before you ever think to ask if your crush likes your skin, look at the universe, the original black girl. Notice how the stars are nothing without the dark skin that holds it. You are, you are, God's crea you are created in God's image, not America's. And that is good. Yeah, for the poem, for the poem. Okay, I'm trying not to get too excited. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. Okay, up next, representing the Western United States is Zoe Dorado, accomplished poet Janice Sap Sapiak. Mm. Accomplished poet Janice Sapigal remarked, "Zoe is poetry in motion, in theory, practice, and action." She sees the world and the future of poetry and its lenses through which she names what can be transformed. Zoe Dorado.
I talked to Tik Tik Maria Labo after joining TikTok's POV. You stopped dressing for the male gaze trend. The Visayan urban myth of Maria Labo goes like this. In another country, an overseas Filipino worker is gang raped by a group of men. She survives by turning into the flying half woman, half demon, Tik Tik. Newly transformed, she rides the sea to return home, only to consume her children, get hacked in the face by her husband, and eventually be witch hunted out of her community. Maria, I want to teach you how to swim. You, a Filipina Megan Fox, straight out of Jennifer's body, rising from the water to consume all the men who dare to call you half human. We'll call it a rebirth, a comeback. I want to watch your wet black hair flick like a whip pinching the air into submission. Celebrate the cloak of chlorine and salt to gather down your spine and make my mother squirm. Cover my eyes till the scene is over until I gently push your fingers apart because how could I not witness something so glorious and hideous all at once? In middle school, she didn't let me walk around our neighborhood in shorts, showed me my cousin's Instagram post of her in a red striped bikini and named all the men who could eat me alive. Listen, Maria, all us bikini babes are ready for our mothers telling us to leave the sun. I know it's hot, but I want to become more brown, covered in heat. So let's go to the pool party down the block, across the Pacific. We'll call ourselves hashtag California girls. Because like you, I want to make a myth believable. Leave boys wide mouthed. I've grown a woman out of my entrails. I'm leaving my belly behind. Took the back country out of my misery to join this new vogue. I got my iPhone out, opened up the app, traced all the repackaged girls until it became a quiet performance. Me, the watcher, me, the watch, me, Maria, the myth, the witch hunt, the brown woman turned beast, filmed my transformation as proof of character development. My new look won't wait for someone to love her back. My body is illegible, trending, just went viral. Didn't you see my legs left in the sand? They refused to swim. Told me I couldn't split a sea or walk on water, but girl, I can fly now. Like you, Mother Mary ain't got shit on me. I took my backdoor body and made a path out of my own want. You left your son and husband and country and sacrificed nothing. But your good mouth, you scoffed at enough men counting the children on your hips so you, the original trendsetter, wore them because they weren't worth eating. Besides, Everyone deserves to be leathered in their finest skin. Mine is tight enough that I might pop out of it into this new Americana, new girlhood, new womanhood, thanks to you. I've glowed up. I'm sexy and made of fire like the sun. No one looks at me. No one can see me in these layers of clothes, this new monster of a body, so see me later. I'm leaving for the ocean. When I arrive, I'll let you know how damn good it feels to drown in your own reflection. It's the closest thing I'll ever get to the sky. Okay, up next, representing the Northeastern United States is Stephanie Pacheco. Global strategist on youth development, Judy Deere said of Stephanie's portfolio, Stephanie's passion for her community and her years as a lead organizer to bring justice and healing to her people is matched only by the passion she brings to her poetry. Stephanie Pacheco. Over 
Field trips called for a walk to the bodega the morning of. Demanded a bacon, egg, and cheese of my five dollars. Said we gon' eat before we go to the Bronx Zoo. Always on the D train. Always on Wednesdays. Always free entry. The train was the hood kid's magic vessel into Wonderland. We made steel poles our enchanted forest, wished upon the stars of its lights, and tapped our feet to the sound of the underground roar. We say the most Bronx trip you could attend was the Bronx Zoo, was the one that was cheapest for the school budget, was the one that all of our mommies could afford was the other place where caged beings live. Say, the mark of nativity is watching other things in capture, is being a witness to the cage, is celebrating the fact that at least we voyage together. Say, we dream of home too. I say I'm from New York and I mean, I've been going to the same braiding shop on Fordham since I was 11. I found the rhythm of fingers twirling my hair into soil and blossom and named it my favorite beat. I say I'm from New York and I mean, I recite Hey Ma by Cameron and Dile Al Amor by Aventura in my sleep. I mean, I dream of song. These be the gospel tunes that made block aunties and tias jump up in praise. I mean, La Pompa was our baptism and these streets are my church. I say, I began to count the pigeons, how they became holy in my chest too. You black winged angel, you remind us all of flight. I mean, we dance to anything. The no music clap applies to all situations. It fills the void of disremembering. I say light feet and we stomp hard and we don't stay still. I say I'm from New York and I mean my high school didn't have a gym or an auditorium or a first week ritual that didn't involve a memorial. I mean, they keep trying to shut down my library to build a precinct in its place. I mean, I learned my poverty by learning other people's wealth. I say underfunded. I say we hungry. I say I am song. I say concrete palace. I say my mother built this. I say our people are buried here, so it must be ours. I say we hold these bodies like the ground does, and I mean, I'm gonna make it home, mama. I mean, this city won't swallow me. I mean, this country can't pick me from its teeth. I mean, we gon' eat before we go. I mean, we coming. I mean, we here. I mean, if these city lights are my stars, then I'm not too far from them at all. I mean, if the pigeons can fly, then I can too. I say we black and brown and poor and trans and queer. We're eternal. We build, so we burn. It is cultural practice to refuse to die. <sighs> Please give it up to all the poets that you heard tonight. Holy cow. Folks are standing for y'all. Um, wow. I don't even know where to begin. Um, my name is Michael Sorelli, and I'm the founder of the National Youth Poet Laureate Program. Um, it's such a great honor to be here before you tonight. You know, when we launched this program in New York City in 2008, we couldn't have imagined that this program would have partners in nearly every state in the United States. Um, we'd be honored at the White House three times. Uh, we would launch the first ever international program in Pakistan uh, just from a small idea that believed that we could celebrate young poets at the intersection of artistic excellence and civic engagement, youth leadership, and social impact. And that's why we're here tonight. So you got to hear their poems. You didn't get to read their resumes and their CVs, which are like, no joke, like 10 pages long and will make you cry. Like, have you ever seen someone cry at, a, at reading a CV? That, that would be me reading their CVs. Um, so I'm here to offer uh, a few words of thanks, but also 
we started this three-year initiative to have youth poet laureate programs in every state in the country. So we have young people from the, I think there's a 12 or 13 states that we're up to right now that are uh, watching around the country. We have kids in Pakistan and in Calcutta, India, who where our next program will be after Pakistan, that are watching. So um, they're all tuning and they're, they're listening out to see who will be their state winner. Um, but before we do that, I want to thank some folks. I mean, our success couldn't be possible without key supporters and local organizations from around the country. Um, on the supporter side, of course, the National Endowment for the Arts, the U.S. State Department, the Poetry Foundation, and the Academy of American Poets. Um, but the people that are really doing the work are the partners on the ground. You got to hear from many of their poets tonight from the DMV area. Um, we have Words, Beats, and Life out of D.C. Shout out to Mozzie, Patrick Washington. We have Do More Baltimore in the house. Um, shout out to Slankston Hughes, who also has the best poetry name in the game. Shout out to Teens with a Purpose, Deirdre Love and Michelle Sims, who are also here from Virginia. Um, we want to thank Secretary Montiero of Maryland, Joy Nguji, for joining us, as well as the Maryland State Poet Laureate, Grace Cavalieri, uh, learning strategist and daughter of Co Georgetown coach John Thompson. Tiffany Johnson's here with us tonight. We want to give it up to DJ Oso oh Fresh right here, right? Um, and we want to thank uh, the Kennedy Center. This is our second time having it here at the Kennedy Center. Um, we couldn't do this without Doug and his crew, Therese Lagama, and of course, um, you heard from him earlier, Mark Bamuthi Joseph. If you don't know, this guy is like literally one of the cornerstones of the youth literary arts movement. Um, he really pushed this movement forward. He's been doing this since day one when youth literary arts programming was a thing and became a thing back in the Bay Area. So please thank you to Bamuthi. Give it up to Bamuthi, he's out there somewhere. Um, and he's also a dope artist in his own right. Um, and then lastly, I want to thank the hardest working team in poetry, the Urban Word staff. Uh, this program was situated in New York City, and we partner with orgs around the country to make this happen. Um, give it up for our executive director, Marissa Lewis. I worked with her for like 15 years. Um, our program director, Ebony Hogan, who's out there. Um, our program manager, Janine Simon, who's also a, an alum of our organization, she'll be out there handing out these cards. We got these beautiful, like, trading cards of the, uh, of the Youth Poet Laureate finalists that you'll get on your way out if you haven't gotten them already. Um, as well as our Youth Poet Laureate mentor, Falu, who worked on the poems with these poets and got that group piece together and, and is always working behind the scenes in our community. And last but not least, our host is Dr. Camille Davis, who is, um, just drives this program forward. I mean, as you can imagine, juggling like 100 programs. We're like in 100 cities, states, and counties, so it's a lot. Um, and so we couldn't do it without Dr. Davis. And so now the part is, uh, that everyone is waiting for before we announce the new National Youth Poet Laureate as these state winners. So I'm going to go through them rather quickly. Um, but I want to... Uh, Give it up to the New York State Program, which is run in partnership with Teachers and Writers Collaborative. Um, congratulations to the runner-up, Vanessa New, and the new New York State Youth Poet Laureate is Ola Rosa and Dubusi. Um, you can save the applause for the end. They're watching online, so all their families are going crazy right now. Our Nevada State Program is run in partnership with the city of Henderson, Nevada, and congratulations to runners-up Celine Chang and Ilakaya Suresh, and the first ever Nevada State Youth Poet Laureate is Sophia Reynoso. Our Idaho State Youth Laureate Program is run in partnership with the Cabin Literary Arts Center. Congratulations to runner-up Swan Sun, and the first ever Idaho Youth Poet Laureate is Josephine Class. Our Tennessee State Youth Poet Laureate Program is run in partnership with Southern Word. Congratulations to runners-up Lottie Cardwell and Anna Hunter. And the Tennessee Youth Poet Laureate is Melody DeLilly. Our California Youth Poet Laureate Program is run by dozens of organizations, including California Writers in the Schools. Congratulations to runners-up Olivia Lay and Alina Kumra. And the California Youth Poet Laureate is Chloe Chow. Our Kentucky Youth Poet Laureate Program is run in partnership with Gateway Regional Arts Center, and congratulations to runner-up Zoya Abbas, and the Kentucky Youth Poet Laureate is Myra Faisal. Our Vermont Youth Poet Laureate Program is run in partnership with Sundog Poetry. Congratulations to runners-up Emma Paris and Garcia Batsi, and the first-ever Vermont Youth Poet Laureate is Harmony DeVoe. 
The Connecticut Youth Poet Laureate Program is run in partnership with the Connecticut Department of Human Development. Congratulations to runner-up Athena Levine and Connecticut Youth Poet Laureate Zi Yi Yan. And the Hawaii Youth Poet Laureate Program running in partnership with the Maui Arts and Cultural Center. Congratulations to the new Hawaii Youth Poet Laureate Maya Peterson. And the Nebraska Youth Poet Laureate Program is run in partnership with our partners here tonight from Nebraska Writers Collective. Congratulations to runners-up Jules Wusterwald, and the Nebraska Youth Poet Laureate is Miranda Davis. And finally, our new program from Locally is the Maryland Youth Poet Laureate Program in partnership with Words, Beats, and Life and Do More Baltimore. And the runner-up is Avery Yoder-Wells, and the Maryland Youth Poet Laureate is Tara Prakash, who you heard from earlier. Her family's here, so give it up for Tara. Congratulations. Um, I think as this program gets in every state, we're gonna have to do a ticker tape because that's a lot of programs. I don't think I could read 50 up here. Um, but now it's my great honor to bring to the stage the current Youth Poet Laureate who will be passing the church. Her name is Salome Agbaroji. She's from Los Angeles. She was the Los Angeles Youth Poet Laureate and she won last year. We announced her um, title in Maui. Um, I just wanna say a few words. She's done an incredible job um, not only is she an incredible poet and youth leader, but she also has been doing her first year of coursework at Harvard University while being the National Youth Poet Laureate. So it's very hard. I mean, she's smart, yeah. But like, can you imagine like, you know, when, when you get a title like this, you get asked to do a lot of things. Um, and you, when you go to Harvard, I've been told, you get asked to do a lot of things, especially in your first year, and she balanced it all. And so she's here to announce the new 2024-2025 National Youth Poet Laureate. Thank you all, and please give one last amazing round of applause for Salome. Hello, everyone. That was so sweet, Michael. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Um, I'm the current National Youth Poet Laureate for, like, the next minute. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to say I so thoroughly enjoyed my tenure. It's an amazing experience to not only be recognized on such a national level, but be able to share my voice with people like you and all over the, the country. Um, and it also means a lot to me to be first generation Nigerian American, so I'm representing this identity um, during my tenure, so thank you so much. Um, I will be passing the torch off to another amazing poet. I don't even know who it is yet. It's in this envelope, but I say amazing poet in confidence because all four of them, as you can see, are amazing poets. So anyone who receives this honor today as the National Youth Poet Laureate of 2024 will do amazingly. So those finalists I was speaking of, you can come out on stage for this special moment. Go ahead, clap. Mm -hmm. It looked amazing and sounded even more amazing. Okay, now, at first starting with our runner-up for the National Youth Poet Laureate as 2024, please clap for Zoe Dorado. Okay, now, what we've all been waiting for. Announcing the National Youth Poet Laureate of 2024. Please clap for Stephanie Pacheco. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for watching live. Please continue to follow us and stay engaged with the work that these incredible young women do across the country at youthlaureate.org. Have a good night. <laughs>